as it's all coming in hot and heavy. NFL free agency, the return of Tom Brady. And it all gets trumped yesterday, late yesterday, by the news that the New York Yankees did know that you're allowed to make trades. The New York Yankees are aware that baseball is happening this year, and they made a blockbuster, getting rid of arguably the biggest lightning rod of a player this franchise has had in a long, long time. Goodbye, Gary Sanchez. Lots cooking in that regard. Then, of course, the Met news today is that Jacob DeGrom will opt out and become a Yankee or renegotiate possibly with the Mets after he opts out at the end of this year. Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, bud? Hey, yo. How you doing? I'm great. I love it. It's like it's coming out from all angles. The I love Jets, it. I love the it. The Jets just signed somebody. Lakin Tomlinson, guard San Francisco 49ers, coming off a Pro Bowl year, hasn't missed a game in years. I love it. Jets have improved their offensive line. Giants got a practice squad wide receiver that uh, played with Dable in Alabama five years ago. And the New York Yankees have a dramatically different infield look. They're better defensively. They're not as good offensively. And Yankee fans seem uh, to be completely uh, split on whether or not they like this move. They're better offensively. Josh Donaldson's the best player in the trade. Let's start off with the easy stuff. He is. Okay. It's not even close. Now, there are concerns about his age, there's concerns about his health, and he's making a lot of money. All that can be true. But Josh Donaldson is the best player in the trade. Let's not be mistaken about that. And the other thing about Josh Donaldson, because I think this needs to be talked about. Instead of just thinking about who's going to be the catcher, I don't love Isaiah Connor, Falefa, I want Carlos Correa. Josh Donaldson's the kind of guy they need. He's a badass. Because he's got attitude. He's got an attitude. Yep. And you said something last year, and you said it over and over again. You said the Yankees don't have soul. Remember that? They were lacking soul big time. Josh Donaldson's got soul. Well, now here's what I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, because we all know about the very public uh, words, the sparring that took place, really Mm one-sided, last year when Donaldson basically said Garrett Cole's the face of the sticky stuff uh, controversy, and went at him. And then Cole refused to throw at him. And if you remember correctly, Donaldson hit a game-winning walk-off home run in Minnesota the first time they met uh, after the sticky stuff uh, nonsense last year. So I don't know how often starting pitchers throw any bullpen sessions or batting practice sessions to actual players. Maybe they do. Maybe they never do. I don't know. But if they do... Garrett Cole still got a plunk. <laughs> Garrett Cole's got to throw it at him just to say, okay, now we're good. Now we're good. I didn't do it a year ago when I should have did it. I'm going to embrace you because you make it better for us, easier for us to win. Right. Because you're a former MVP. Yeah. I got to throw at you once. It's a good way to break Have the some ice. self-respect. <laughs> Hit him in the ass. And then let's hug it out. Let's go get some beers. Yeah. And we're good. Yeah. Right? Well, well, that that got a lot of attention a year ago. And I remember you even saying, if Cole doesn't hit him, fire Aaron Boone, get rid of Garrett Cole. That, to me, it is the past. It doesn't even matter. I don't think Brian Cashman needed to text Garrett Cole or ask permission. I'm give sure me, he didn't. Give me a freaking break. All right? So they had some issues a year ago. Josh Donaldson, assuming he can stay healthy, and I accept that that's a major question, is a hell of a baseball player. And so I like it from that aspect. I think where Yankee fans are disappointed is that trading for Isaiah Connor Falefa tells you they're not signing Trevor Story and they're not signing Carlos Correa. And there were a lot of Yankee fans that looked at this offseason and said, you have to get me one of the elite-level shortstops, and clearly they're not going in that direction. And the obvious thing is, okay, what's next? Because they're not done. They're clearly not done. I think they're going to add a left-handed bat at first base. I hope it's not Anthony Rizzo because they should do better than that. But this trade on its surface is not a bad trade. Gary Sanchez was done here. Did we all agree on that? I mean, like five he, people ago? bitched about him more than any of the Yankee, and it got to the point like enough already. Yeah, he hit twenty plus home runs. Liability defensively. You know, people thought he was lazy at times, and you know the experiment, if that's what you want to call it, it was time for him to go somewhere else. So we all agreed on that. Yeah. So we all agreed Gary needed to go, and Gio Urshela is what he is. He's a solid defensive third baseman. He's not a great hitter. He's never going to match the production he had two years ago. Then ask yourself this, Yankee fans: What'd you give up? You didn't give up that much. You've upgraded your defense at shortstop. Plus, Connor Kalefa gives you speed. He gives you an aspect to your team that you really didn't have last year. The catching situation isn't great. And that's the that's the thing to be honest about. That's where they definitely went backwards. They're good defensively. Rortvert's a good defensive player. He's also really built. Have you seen the muscles on this guy? I have not. 
But I plan on uh, doing some Google imaging when I'm alone at home tonight. Bro. Yeah. You better be alone. I, that's, uh, that's my plan. Yeah. I mean, there's my veins plan, popping out of veins, popping out I of like muscles. It. I like it. Oh, there, that might be uh, Pete Alonzo <laughs> calling me right now. How's he doing? Uh, no, that's uh, not Pete Alonzo calling me, unfortunately, but Pete is good. I also don't buy, and maybe I'll be proven wrong about this, and Yankee fans better hope I'm not proven wrong. I don't love the idea of going into the season with Kyle Higashioka and Ben Rotevert as my two catchers. Because... You can't rely on anything or producing anything offensively from the two guys. They're solid defensively, yep. but you're going to need a little bit, like a tiny bit of offense from the catching position. Uh, so, listen, Yankees are making moves. Uh, I think everyone agrees that they're not done yet. And it just, it's like, you know, the best, for me, the best part of it, because I'm not going to claim to have seen a single game that their new shortstop has ever played. I haven't. I can read everyone else's rewriting that he's a defensive upgrade. Mm -hmm. It clearly shows that they're in love with uh, Volpe and the other guy uh, in the minors. That's uh, Peraza. Peraza, who's a future shortstop for him. So rather than go out there and sign a seven-year deal with a guy that's going to cost you $30 million bucks a year, they think they've got two guys who might ultimately become that guy, so they weren't willing to trade either guy, obviously. Uh, baseball's back. Like, to me, that's the story here. You can debate all day and night. I don't want to do that. If you guys want to, of course, Evan's your guy for that, and we can do that throughout the afternoon. The pros and cons of the trade, the bigger picture to me, and listen, it's the Mets getting Bassett to be another pitcher. It's the Yankees making the move they made yesterday. It's, to me, baseball's back. Oh, it is back, baseball's isn't it? Baseball's now a legitimate focus of conversation. Like, yeah, I know Yankee fans, as you do, who despised Gary Sanchez. I know Yankee fans, as you do, who adored Gary Sanchez. That's a major topic of conversation right now. Have the Yankees gotten better? Did the Yankees commit too much money to Donaldson? Should the Yankees have gotten this guy? Are they going to get that guy? Baseball is back. I know. Do you understand what that means? Isn't that better than talking about CBT? I'm not sure if it is. <laughs> You're not sure I'm if it not is? I'm not sure. I think the despair of maybe not having baseball oh, stop was it. more fun. But here we are, so I can't, I can't go backwards, right? This is fantastic. We have real baseball to talk about. Meanwhile, while the Yankees and Mets are both making moves, and uh, neither one of us think that either team is done just yet, uh, wait, we have another deal right now. Just hand it to me. Uh, Atlanta and Oakland are now in agreement on a trade. Matt Olson is going wow. to the Braves, which means that Freddie wow. Freeman is no longer an Atlanta Brave. So this is big on two fronts. Number there one, you, you just hit the Freeman stuff. The Braves are out on him. I doubt they're going to use the DH spot to split time. So Freeman's not going to be Atlanta Brave next year. Matt Olson's not going to be a New York Yankee. So right. it leads to, is Freeman still in play for the Yankees? Or are they conceding that the L.A. Dodgers are going to win out? Because the only teams we've heard about over the last three days connected to Freddie Freeman were the Atlanta Braves, the L.A. Dodgers, and on the outskirts of it, the New York Yankees. John Heyman even said, Yankees are pessimistic about Freddie Freeman. Okay. Well, now... I mean, you you got a better shot because you've eliminated the team he has spent his entire career with. Uh, and yeah, if you're holding out hope that Freddie Freeman becomes a Yankee, it got a little bit easier just now because the Atlanta Braves have now moved on from their player. The negative is a lot of Yankee fans targeted Matt Olson as the number one guy they wanted to go after, and dealing with Oakland made so much sense because you could have added their catcher, Sean Murphy, who's an offensive upgrade over what they have now, plus you could have added one of the many pitchers that they're selling off, Plus, Matt Olson's young. Plus, Matt Olson's a lefty. I mean, he was a, a very appealing piece. But the truth is, it sounded like the Oakland A's were asking they wanted for Volpe. Yep. And if they were insistent on that, Brian Cashman is probably right to say, look, we're not cashing that chip right now on Matt Olson. But this makes Freddie Freeman either an L.A. Dodger yep. or a New York Yankee. And we'll probably find out relatively soon, now that Atlanta has announced that they're done with Freddie Freeman. So that just happened. So there's that. The phone number to join us, 877-337-6666. And none of this news trumps the big news, which is the return of the GOAT, Tom Brady, coming out of retirement Ugh. after spending an afternoon with, with Ronaldo <laughs> discussing their futures together. Tom Brady goes to Twitter last night. He wasn't going to let anyone else break the story. He's going to own his narrative. And that is after these past two months, I've realized – my place is still on the field and not in the stands. That time will come, but it's not now. I love my teammates, 
and I love my supportive family. They make it all possible. I'm coming back for my 23rd season in Tampa, unfinished business, LFG. (laughs) Now, unfinished business. You won a Super Bowl there. You've got seven of them. You've got a gazillion MVP awards, virtually every single you know record uh, in the history of the NFL. If Tom Brady has unfinished business, what does every other quarterback <laughs> in the league that, have? That statement <laughs> is a part of why Tom Brady is the, Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. That he can use losing one particular year in the postseason as I have unfinished business. Yeah. He's the most decorated quarterback by far to ever play the sport. And I have to admit. As anti-Tom Brady as I've been, I welcome his return to the National Football League. I told you it was happening. Because I want to see his career end in a different way. Oh, you want him to be uh, miss the playoffs? I want him miss the playoffs. You want like a 4-13 and disaster. You're damn right. Uh Well, my Super Bowl predictions have now changed for next year. (laughs) Uh, I am now uh, predicting that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers... Will win their second Super Bowl uh, in the last three years. Well, I also have to change half of my Deshaun Watson prediction because the two teams I had mentioned were Carolina and Tampa. Well, I got to take Tampa out. Tampa's out. Uh, much like I lose Pittsburgh on that because Mitchell Trubisky is going to the Steelers on a two-year deal. Yep. So now we're left. It looks like Carolina and New Orleans are the two finalists as he is going to go meet both of those teams, I guess, uh, this week. Yep, yep. And then they'll make a decision at the end of the week. But lots to do, obviously. We'll get all your calls on it. 877-337-6666. Uh, it's Carton and Roberts on the fan. Your call's coming up. Immediate thoughts on the Yankee deal. A little Met action, of course. The only Met story today is uh, the DeGrom news that he says, listen, I'm going to opt out after this season, but I'll be in constant contact with Steve Cohen and the Mets. And my druthers, my choice is, if, it, if we can, I'd love to be a Met for my entire career. But I'm also not going to be stupid and eliminate the possibility of going to a much higher bidder. So that'll play itself out. But that's a dead issue now. He made it dead. So I certainly respect that. You may be watching your final season as Jacob DeGrom in City Field. We're not watching our final season yeah, as Jacob DeGrom in certainly City Field. On the table. It's, not, it's not on the table. Definitely on the table. Steve Cohen will not let him leave. But it's on the table. No, it's not. Opting out means he can talk to 29 other people. So he'll talk Listen. to them. He'll re-sign with the Mets. Yeah, let me Done. ask you a question. Yeah. If you allowed your wife to talk to 29 other men. She'd come back. You think so? Yeah. You hope so. No, I know so. You hope so. Sometimes you got to have confidence in life. I know so. my wife wouldn't leave me talking yeah. to 29 other guys. 29. And I know full well that Stephen Cohen, yeah. our le- our hero, I love this guy. I don't give a damn about a tax. I scoff at your stupid tax. Steve Cohen's changed everything. And one of the things he's changed about me personally yeah. is I'm not worried about losing Jacob DeGrom. 29 other suitors. Because Steve Cohen will outbid every last one of them. So if you or Big Mac or yeah. anyone else yeah. wants to play the same game I've been playing with you about Aaron Judge coming to the Mets, yeah. you can play that game. Look at this face. Yeah, I ain't worried. You better call home real quick. <laughs> 29 in different cities all across the country. Younger wealthier have you seen the faster, size of steve slower, cohen's bank account bigger <laughs> the whole thing just yeah. go just say it. maybe have the conversation when you get home tonight we'll get into it uh some tournament stuff later today as well it's certainly not the focus of today's show right here on the fan 